Anybody believe in Jesus? Hallelujah. I don't believe he's dead. Uh, he did die, but he wasn't dead too long, was he? Amen. He's the king of kings. He got up out of that grave. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Arcovio spoke to us on um, Saturday night. I'm glad you all came to the prayer meeting. That was so important. And didn't you feel the power of God? Wasn't that a prayer meeting or what? Did you hear him speak of the, the angels and that how God had given him angels to, to, to go with him? And, that he, and he spoke that angels were going to be here with us. Did you hear that? You heard it? Okay, now let me tell you something. That same morning, now that was what, at 7? Or after 7 o'clock that night, he was talking, right? That same morning, I was laying right here on the floor praying by myself. I was laying in the floor. I didn't even tell my wife until after the prophecy, I don't think. I don't even think I mentioned it. And, uh, but I, I turned over right there in that chair. I saw an angel. Sitting in that chair, I saw him clothed in a white flowing garment. Yes. Just, just a, I can't even describe it. Oh, my. But I saw it, and when he spoke that, that night, on Saturday night, I knew that was a confirmation of what I saw. Yeah. Amen. Because I wasn't even sure if I believed in what I saw or not. And then he turned around just a few days later. And, no, I mean that same day, just that night, and said it. That was a confirmation when I saw that angel sitting right there. And I saw him for a moment and he disappeared. It was just like that. I saw that white flowing garment. Just, it was like a thick, uh, just a thick, heavy garment, white garment he was wearing. Amen. So that was a confirmation to me. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Another miracle. Uh, and you know it was a miracle. God's done this how many times for us when we needed him to do it. And over one week, we kept watching that news report. 80% uh, chance of rain. It did not change every single day. Sunday, it's going to be 80% chance of rain in the afternoon. Thunderstorms. Every day they were saying. They said it a week, a week ahead of time. Thunderstorms on Sunday afternoon, 80% chance of rain in the afternoon. Every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Started Friday, Saturday, and we started changing a little bit. Got down to 60%. Did you hear any thunderstorms Sunday afternoon? No. No, you didn't, did you? Did you see any rain until the party was over? You didn't, did you? Uh, I was walking in when it was over, and three drops of rain hit me. Hallelujah. And Brother Fowler started putting his stuff in. It started raining a little bit. He got everything in. It started coming down. The party was over. The party was over. Elijah said, it will not rain. It will not do on the ground until I say. Hallelujah. We got power in prayer. And we prayed about that, didn't we? Did we not pray about that all week long? And we spoke to the clouds and we spoke to the rain. Amen. We spoke to the elements and we spoke to the weather and we talked to the Lord and we talked to the devil about it, didn't we? Hallelujah. You say you're bragging, I'm bragging on Jesus. Amen. If we could testify about, testify about a healing, if we could testify about somebody getting baptized, Sister Joyce, we can testify about God holding back the rain when the weatherman said it's going to rain. Hallelujah. All week long he said it's going to rain. 80% chance is close to 100, ain't it? That's close to 100%. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank God for a miracle. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Elijah said, son, stand thou still. And the Bible says it did not move by the space of a whole day. The sun stood and the, and the, vow, and the moon stood in its place. By the space of a whole day. It should have been nighttime already. But he spoke to the elements. Amen. And God performed a miracle. Hallelujah. There was a need for it. He wasn't just out there doing something. There was a need. And when we prayed, there was a need. And God responded to the need, didn't he? I said he responded to the need. <clears throat> Why? And we are having an overwhelming response from this block party of, of interest. Are we not? Every home we walk in, people 
are telling us they're coming Sunday. Now, are they all going to come? I don't know. But I'm talking about a positive uh, feeling. People are talking about what they felt out there. What they felt. People are telling us, man, here's one guy said, I, not criticizing, not criticizing, but he said, I, I've been going to that Baptist church, and he says, he says, I live in the mission over there. And he says, uh, I've been going to the Baptist church because they require us to go. He said, but you know what? I never felt nothing like that. I never felt nothing like that over there. I, I, when I felt here, talking about out in the street, out in the chaotic street, where all the spirits are roaming and all that stuff going on. Amen. The power of God was still strong. Amen. A lady got the Holy Ghost right on the double yellow line, right out there in front of the building, on the double yellow line that separates the cars. She got the Holy Ghost sitting there. Hallelujah. Sitting there in front of the street, got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. We saw her today. Then we talked to her today. Did you know that was the lady at the library? Amen. Amen. God will defy the devil. God will embarrass him. And he did it on Sunday. People walking in here to get baptized in Jesus' name before the block party even started. Before 2 o'clock, people was marching in here and was going down in Jesus' name. Man, is that awesome or what? That's beautiful. Amen. Walked in one young lady's house today. Lives right over here in, in, in the apartments uh, just a block from us. And she, just sat down for a minute, young lady in her early 20s, no doubt, a couple little kids. She says, can I join, can I join y'all's church? Want to join the church? Well, she got that, well, she got baptized, didn't she? Yeah, she got baptized. Or got the Holy Ghost. She had got the Holy Ghost on Sunday as well. She probably don't know for A from Z about the Bible, but that's okay. We're going to teach her. As long as she's willing, we're going to teach her. Amen? Folks, we got to love people. We got to love people. Let me tell you something. You got to love that sinner more than you love yourself huh when they when somebody upsets you and makes you mad you better bite your tongue you better bite your tongue amen because you better love that sinner more than you love yourself why do i say that because for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son he came in flesh himself and died on a cross in in, in human form that's how much he loved the sinner he loved it he came and took painful suffering and died on an old rugged cross that he might save dirty old rotten sinners. I ain't saying that disrespectful, but I'm saying that's how some people look at him. He died for that. He died. For, oh, let me say the ugly, the dirty pedophile. He died for him. You can't say he didn't. He died for the sinner. He died for the murderer. He died for the rapist. He died for the drug dealer. He, he died, died for the prostitute. He didn't die for Christians. He died for the sinner. I said he died for the sinner. He died for you when you was in your sins. When you was committing fornication and adultery and running around doing the crazy stuff you used to do. He had you on his mind when he was hanging on that cross. Ain't that something? What kind of a greater love hath no man than this than a man would lay down his life? For his friends. I'm privileged, sister, that he called me a friend. He called me his friend. He called you his friend. He's, he said, uh, I call, he said, I, I don't tell them they're not my friends, what I'm doing. I, how's it saying, John? I tell my friends what I do. He's going, he tells us sometimes what he's doing, don't he? <laughs> Amen. You know what this world needs and you know what we need is a good relationship with Jesus. Amen. A day, uh, like, like the sister here says, I want to go to church every night to Bible study. I wish everybody would just want to go to Bible study once a week. I'm glad you want to go every night, but I wish everybody at least want to go once a week. <laughs> we got some folks that don't never come to Bible study. They, they think they're good without it and they just they need to get on fire for the Lord. That's just the way it is. Amen. When you get hungry enough for God, you can't let your drama keep you home from church. Oh, if your drama keep you, your phone will be ringing, somebody's going to be upset. Next thing you know, you're going to have to go out and take a call. Honey, you wait till later. You've got to let that drama go. 
That devil will send drama your way. He'll keep you home from Bible study, keep you home from Sunday church, keep you home from ministry, keep you home, keep keep you uh, keep you mind occupied with drama, with stuff that'll amen. Keep you on the sidelines of God's work. You got to say no to your drama. I'm sorry. Dra if drama is there, it'll be there when I get back. And if it's not, guess what? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I'm not going to take care of it. And in a couple hours, I went to church. Amen. I can't, by me missing, is not going to help the drama. The drama is still going to be there. I might as well go on to church, amen, and keep my mind right. That's right. Amen. Everybody's got some drama to push around. Amen. And I'm going to do my best. And I know there are great emergencies and things. Some, it could happen. We, we haven't had them. Uh, but you know what? If, if at one you know, 1.45 in the afternoon, I got a call and said my mother's laying on the floor. Guess what? I, I guess I'd be late for church. I don't know how I'd get her here. I have to drag her by her ankles, I guess. <laughs> I'm teasing a little bit there. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. The apostle, I don't know if I'm going to read a scripture, but I'm going to talk to you about some things I have on my mind. But the Apostle Paul talking about being in perils often. Find that scripture, peril, perils, perils. And one of the, the epistles, one of the epistles, and he talked about being in all these situations. And we get, we get in situations, amen. And what's going to keep you in your situations and in your problems is your relationship that you had earlier that day and the day before. When you had a relationship with the Lord. Amen. When you had your prayer time and you're seeking after God. You find it? Okay. Read that, read that passage there. There's several verses. Um, it starts in 2 Corinthians 11, 26. I'm not sure that's where you want me to start. Go ahead. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers. What does that mean, perils of water? Shipwrecks. You spent time, the Bible says in one place, a night and a day in the deep water. Uh -huh. I never did that. Now, I take a shower every morning, but I never spent a night and a day in deep water. Uh -huh. And what was, it, what was the next one? perils of robbers. And rob, perils of robbers. He didn't say robbers. He That's said robbers. Yeah. People robbing him. Putting a sword in his back, saying, Give me your sack of gold, boy. Give me what you got. Perils of being robbed. Go ahead. In perils by my own countrymen. By, by people that he knew, people that he should have been able to trust. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. The, the, you know what, where you, who's going to hurt you the most? It's not the guy out there on the street that calls you ugly. And tells a lie. You know, that's not going to bother you. That. But somebody that you love. And somebody you trust. And they're going to tell a lie on you. And they say something. That's what hurts. That's the people you think are your countrymen. Somebody that you trust. Somebody that you love. And you think that they love you. And then they went and told something stupid. Amen. As Paul went through it too. Perils by his own countrymen. Uh huh. In perils by the heathen. Heathen. And we go through stuff by this old world, don't we? This old world we're living in. We go through perilous things. In perils of the city. City, uh-huh. In perils of the wilderness. Wilderness. In perils of the sea. Everywhere you are. In perils among false brothers. There's stuff going on everywhere. But you've got to keep on living for God. You've got to keep on keeping on, as somebody said. So you gotta, you got to make up your mind, I'm going to live for God no matter what peril comes my way. I'm not going to backslide because somebody did something, somebody said something. My mind's made up. I, I've got my foot on a rock like the old song. Anybody ever heard that old song? i got my mind made up. My foot's on a rock. My, my foot's on the rock of Jesus and my mind's made up. Somebody may tell a lie on me. Somebody may hurt my feelings. Somebody may do something, but you know what? I'm not going to quit God. I said, I'm, oh, let's all say, I'm not going to quit God. Come on, let's say, I'm not going to quit God. They, they're going to do what they're going to do, but they can't make me quit God. Amen. One day they may burn us at the stake. 
They're burning Christians over there in the Middle East now. They're setting them on fire. They're cutting their heads off. ISIS has gone crazy. Amen. Some of these uh, uh, extremist Muslims, they're killing Christians over there. And they want to get right here in this country, and they want to do it in the United States. That's what 9 was all about. Amen. When those planes hit those towers in New York, it was about extremists that want to kill Americans, that want to kill Christians. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And weariness and painfulness and watchings all yeah, You ever feel weary? Come on, you ever just feel weary and tired? You ever just feel wore out? Does your mind ever get tired? You feel like your brain is just tired? Yes. You know, we call that depression. I don't like to call it depression, but that's what it is. Your mind is just tired. That's weariness. You, not just weary in body, but sometimes our minds get tired. And we get tired of the trouble. We get tired of the pressure. We get tired of this. And we get, wow, we're human. Right. We're human. We can't keep from being human. But while we're going through these things, listen, we got to keep our eye on the prize. Come on. Paul said, I'm not going to look back. How's the scripture going that I'm thinking of right now? I'm going to keep my eye on the prize. I'm, I keep, how's it go? Huh? I, 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 pray, right, I press toward the mark, Sister Joyce. I'm pressing toward the mark. Come on. There's a finish line, Brother Robert. There's a finish line. I'm pressing toward the finish line. I got all kinds of obstacles. I got things I got to jump over. I, I watched somebody posted something on Facebook about a, some kind of a race. I don't know even what kind of race. But these guys were racing, and they had to jump over things. Then they had to crawl under things. Then they had to climb these walls. And they had to jump down off of the wall. And then they had to do all kinds of crazy stuff. And you know what? That's what we're doing spiritually sometimes. And we get tired. Hallelujah. And we're facing this, but you got to keep your mind on the prize. Amen. You're going to be tired, but you know there's a resting day coming. Amen. You know there's an eternity coming. Amen. You know there's a heaven in front of you. Amen. You got to make it. You got to push on. Amen. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to say, hey, I got, I, I, I know I've come too far to look back. I've, too, I've come too far to quit now. Amen. I got to make it somehow. I got to press on. I got to press in the press. I got to press through the storm. I got to press through this trial. I got to take the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. We got to keep our eye on the finish line. It's not too far away. I could die by Sunday, and if I do, you might as well say he made it because my mind's on him. I'm not looking at the world. I'm not loving the world. I don't want no part of the world. I want to do the work of God. Amen. I got my mind on the prize. Hallelujah. If I lay down on the pillow, amen, and my eyes are closed forever, you know one day I'm going to rise in eternity in a new life, in a new resurrection. You better shout at my funeral. You better jump up and down down at my funeral. Somebody better spin and dance. Hallelujah. At my don't cry when they lay me down, but you better run around and scare that old funeral director. That's right. Scare that funeral director. Make him drink those potty in his pants. Hey, what are these people doing? They shot up in this place. Come on now, it ain't time to be sad. We're going to make it. We're going on, I said. I said, we're going to make the finish line. I don't have to be the first one there. You don't have to be the first one, but you got to finish. You got to finish. That's how you get, you got to finish the race. I, I seen a video one time. This fellow in the race, and he had something wrong with him. Some kind of disease. Leg, something was wrong with him. But you know what everybody had already gone across and he couldn't make it. He done fell down. But a couple couple fellas got him. They got him on, on they got up under his arms. Amen. They started kidding. Amen. He's about dragging his little legs. Amen. Everybody done got across. And he's on. He, they were just got it. They was holding him up. They were just dragging him. And they finally made it across the finish line. You know, sometimes we got to drag one another. Amen. Sometimes we got to carry one another. Sometimes we got to hold each other up. Sometimes we got to lift each other's arms up. Sometimes we got to say, hey, brother, don't give up now. Come on, sister. You got to make it. Come on. We're about, to, we're about to get there. Home is just around the corner. Come on now. It's too late now to quit. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm not going to quit. i got to make it. I'm going through perils. 
No, no, we get we all get depressed sometimes. We all get tempted sometimes to think ignorant thoughts, don't we? Oh my, I just don't know if I can make it. You ever get tempted to think that way? Maybe you don't, but I'm human. I, I maybe I'm the only human person in here. And I don't I'm not talking about backsliding. I'm not talking about quitting the church. You know, just get discouraged. Yeah. Amen. My mind ain't on this world to quit the church or quit God. You say quit the church. The church is part of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I said the church is part of the kingdom. It's a facility and part of the kingdom. I'm not talking about these walls. I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the body of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about you and I. We make up the members. How we congregate together. How do we want to be together? When you get on fire for God, nothing will hold you back. Amen. I said, when you get on fire for God, you want to be in church every night as you can. Come on now. When you get on fire for God, nothing will keep you from being here. When you get your little co-ex brothers and sisters, don't stay home from church. When your ankles and knees and hip bones are hurting, don't stay home from church. When you got a little back, I said a little back, and I know you've been in excruciating pain, and I know I ain't been there. I can't talk for you. I'm not talking for you, okay? I'm saying, amen, but don't stay home for little stuff, church. Come on, you got to judge that thing and say, oh, no. I got to push on because there's healing in the house. Oh, there's victory in the house. Amen, there's deliverance in the house. There's Holy Ghost power in the house. Oh. Oh, come on now. I got to get to where the power is. Where my brothers and my sisters are praying in the unity. Where they're singing the songs of Zion. Where they're singing the songs of victory. Where they're singing the songs of faith and deliverance and healing. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Time me to a team of horses. Time me to a team of horses. You might start dragging me away from the church. But let me tell you, I'm going to fight and crawl, and bite, spit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow my nose on the horse. I'm going to do anything I can. I'm going to grab his ankle bone. I'm going to bite his shin. I'm going to get a hold of that horse and trip him up. I'm going to get to the house of God. Come on now. You just can't let just another any little thing. Amen. I'm not saying you are. But I just want to help you avoid the temptation. We got to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Come on, that's what the, the apostle says. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And church, this is the evil day. This is the most evil day no doubt this world has ever seen. Oh, it's time to stand. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Protecting all those vital organs, those spiritual organs, that spiritual heart, the spiritual lungs, the spiritual stomach. That breastplate protects all the vital organs. The helmet of salvation protects your mind and your thoughts. Come on now. you got to be careful what you're thinking. Don't stay on negative stuff too long. Amen. Uh, your mind in a garbage can. Your mind is not a trash can. Your mind in a garbage disposal. Your mind is so precious. Don't let just anything stay in your mind. When negative stuff comes in, honey, kick it out this side. It comes in this side. Get it out that side as fast as you can. One old preacher told a young preacher because the young preacher was disturbed by his thoughts and he was condemned all the time by just stuff that was coming in his mind and he told that old preacher about it and the old preacher said listen son he said you can't stop the birds from flying around your head but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair. How do they would want to make a nest in my hair, would they? Hey, Amen. They wouldn't be there, Brother Robert, in our hair too long, would they? Hey, Amen. They don't want a nest on the side. They want a nest on top. Amen. So in other words, you got stuff that comes in your mind. Don't think you've sinned every time something evil comes in your mind. I want to give you some relief right now, okay? Because something evil comes, you might so something so despicable comes into your brain. And for a few moments, you think on it. And then, oh my, what if I just thought? 
You know what? Kick it out. Kick it out. As soon as you can't get it out, don't, don't let it linger. Because if you let it linger for a long time, you will make it sin. But because it came in there, it doesn't mean you sin. Listen, I learned this because when I was a young man, oh, the devil beat me up constantly. I was unable to divide the thoughts from the intents. But, but Hebrews, was it Hebrews 4 and 12, says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, the word of God, uh, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, uh-huh, discerner of the thoughts and intents. The word, there's a difference between your thoughts and your intentions. I could lay on the floor praying and talking in tongues for an hour or two. Next thing you know, the devil dropped something in my brain that was so evil. Right. Think, oh my God, do, do I even have the Holy Ghost thinking something like that? And then when I learned, when I finally learned, there is a difference between your thoughts and your intentions. And the devil does not have access to read your mind, but he does have access to drop things in your mind. That's good teaching right there. That's good teaching. Let me say it again. The devil don't have access to know what's in your mind or your heart. No, he ain't God. But he does have access to drop eggs in your basket. And he knows by your response if you received them or not. How you acted out, he can tell if you received it or not. Because if you get up and you begin to act it out, then he knows. But if you let it go and you dismiss it in Jesus' name, I'm not receiving that. I rebuke that right now. And sometimes I have found I have rebuked the devil and I have got rid of him. And other times I have noticed that my best defense or offense is simply ignoring him. Now, you can't always ignore him. Sometimes you've got to rebuke him. But that's what it says in James. Amen. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Sometimes you've got to say, devil, get out in Jesus' name. Get away from me. Get away from my kids. Get away from my spouse. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. And sometimes you've got to raise your voice a little bit. You've got to speak with an authoritative voice because the devil will pound you and he'll beat you. That's right. But sometimes after you've done that, you've got to just ignore him. He's waiting for your response. Sometimes you ignore him and he'll just flee away. Sometimes he'll go just by ignoring him. But if that doesn't work, you better turn around and rebuke him. You better tell that devil where to go. Amen. See, devil, you know you're going to hell, don't you? So you might as well go right now. Because you and I don't agree. And the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So you and I cannot walk together. So you might as well get out right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The devil is a fallen angel. He is not God. The Bible calls him the God of this world, only identifying him to do evil in a mass destructive way. But he is not a God as God is God. You understand? He is not a God as God is God. No, God fills the universe. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He knows all things. He knows what you're thinking right now. God does. He reads the very thoughts and intentions. He knows the difference. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows who's going to be born a hundred years from now if he tarries. He knows all that. The devil don't know that. He wants us to think he knows all that. He don't know. No, that's, that's just another lie that he gives us. So we think he's so powerful. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you where his power is, is in his voice. If you believe what he says, he's got power over you. If you believe what he says, he's got power over you. Amen. Power, power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Who knows there's power in the name of Jesus? You can awaken, you can awaken at night from a bad dream. Amen. Simply rebuke the enemy and say, Get out of here, get take your dreams and go in the name of Jesus. I resist you, amen. My wife's given the testimony a number of times and how she used to be uh, so bothered by these nightmarish dreams, and, and it would seem like almost every night. And it, it was happening before we were married, even uh, several years after we were married. We'd wake up sometimes just, just like just in a, just in a whirlwind. 
and, and so on. And you know what? We prayed about it several times. We rebuked the devil. We prayed together when she would wake up. And you know what? It's a very rare occasion for her to have those nowadays. You know why? Because we resist the devil. Amen. The God is not doing that. That's the enemy of torment. The enemy wants to torment our minds. And the Bible says if any two of you agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. So sometimes, you know what? We got to agree together. Sometimes you got to get somebody, amen, that you trust. You got to get a good brother or a good sister and say, hey, pray with me about this. Help me resist the devil. Amen. Get your good pastor. Get you somebody and say, I need some prayer. Amen. I need somebody to agree with me. Because you know, one shall chase a thousand, but two shall put ten thousand to flight. Come on, one shall chase a thousand, but two shall put ten thousand to flight. There's power in the unified prayer. There's power when you and I come together. There's power in the, when you and I come together in prayer versus you praying all by yourself alone. Sure, there's power when you pray by yourself, but when you come with a brother or sister, or you come in a unified prayer meeting. Right. If it's powerful when two people pray, how about when 10 or 20 or 100 pray? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what happened on Saturday night when we was here praying? Come on, with the pastors that were here praying. Come on, the angels that were loosed. Amen. The gifts of the Spirit in operation. Praise God. How they're coming together in unity. There's something powerful about the spirit of unity. That's why we've got to make sure, amen, that we always come in here ready to ready to give, ready to give. Never go to church and think well, on your way or, or sometime that day, well, I'm just going to sit back today. I'm going to kind of take it easy. Amen. I, I, I would personally believe that would be a sin to think I'm just going to go to church today let somebody else do it. Let somebody else worship. I'm going to relax today. I, I would have to say in my own self, I believe that would be a sin. Amen. I'm not going to do that. I want to encourage you. Don't ever do that. Amen. Make up your mind when I get to church tonight. I, if nobody else worships, I'm going to worship. If nobody else prays, I'm going to pray. If nobody else cries, I'm going to try to cry. If nobody else dances, I'm going to try to dance. Amen. If nobody backs the preacher, I'm going to back the preacher. If nobody gives in the offering, I'm going to give in the offering. I'm going to get involved in what God wants me to give. And you may be the person that breaks open a revival. You may be the person that breaks open a Holy Ghost move that night because you were the only person that stood up and you desired and you pressed on when everybody else sat back in their little do little self. Amen. You made up your mind. I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. I'm going to see a miracle tonight. I'm going to touch that coffin and see that young man rise. I'm going to speak at the tomb of Lazarus and I'm going to believe he's going to get up. I'm going to speak to the sun and watch it stop. I'm going to talk to the rain and I'm going to see it stop. I'm going to believe God for a miracle. Is there anybody believe that God can do a miracle? Come on. Come on. You know what the gift of miracles is? The gift of miracles intervenes and, it, it intervenes and changes uh, the course of nature. And that's what we prayed. That was, a, that, was a, that was a pure miracle on Sunday when it did not rain. And for a week they predicted thunderstorms and raining on Sunday afternoon. That was a pure miracle from God that God heard the cry of his church. Hallelujah. Because we had a cause. And David said, is there not a cause? Yes, church, there is a cause. We got to rise to the challenge. We got to rise and pray. We got to rise and cry loud and spare not. We got to love the Lord, our God, with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Can we say amen? We got to love the Lord. I said we got to love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. We got to give him everything. I said we got to give him everything. We got to press on. I said we got to press on. I preached about the man of the Gadarenes, the insane man, the man full of demons. Oh my, nothing could stop him from praise. Nothing could stop him from worship. Amen. The devil couldn't stop him. Amen. I wonder what stops us. Us. The devil can't stop you. He don't stop you. You. You are your own worst enemy. I am my own worst enemy. When 
I decided I wasn't going to praise God, and when I decided I was going to sit back, and I was going to let everybody else do it tonight, you know what that was? That was me. That was my own carnal self, sinning against the Lord. But church, it's a time to rise to the challenge every night. You know what? You may not feel good tonight, and I understand there's days I don't feel good, but I'm still going to press on it. I may not jump as high, but I'm still going to jump. I may not run as fast, but I'm still going to run. I may not clap as long, but I'm still going to clap. I may not shout as loud as I normally do, but I'm still going to shout. I'm not going to let myself or the devil shut me down. Amen. Because I know there was a man by the name of Paul and another man by the name of Silas shut up in a jail cell. Hallelujah. They was preaching the name of Jesus. They was preaching that body name and they got put in jail. Amen. They had shackles on their feet. They had shackles on their arms. They couldn't go nowhere. They was put inside the inner prison. They weren't just in a prison. They were in the the lower dungeon, the safest place they could be. No doubt it was pretty dark in that place. I could just see some water coming down the crack of the wall. I could see maybe a mouse and a rat. Maybe a little snake slithering across the floor. I could see a big hefty jail guard outside the bars there. Standing there with his sword. Standing there with his knife. Amen. All grown out and ugly and big and bad and killer guard. Right. Couple of them. Right. All of a sudden, these boys, they begin to sing some songs of the Lord. And they begin to sing, come on, sir. That's what we got to do in the time of trouble. When you feel like you're in jail. When you feel like the devil's got you shut up. When you feel like the devil's got you bound. You got to start singing. You got to start praising. You got to get yourself up out of there. All of a sudden, even the chains fell off his arm. The chains fell off the other arm. It cut off his feet. He said, hey, Paul. Hallelujah. The prison door opens up. That's right. They step out. That's where we're at sometimes. We're inside of our prisons. Because we've been going through junk all week long. Come on, and our junk is real. Because it's about people we care about. Sometimes it's just about our own pain in life. Sometimes it's our sons and our daughters. Sometimes it's other stuff. But whatever it is, I'm telling you, you got to come up out of that prison through your praise. That jail cell's going to open up by your praise and your worship. That, that those, those, those bands and those chains on your hands and on your legs, they're going to fall off because you're praising. Not because you know God. You're going to have to praise Him when it's dark. You're going to have to praise Him when the, when the wall is leaking. You're going to have to praise Him when there's a devil his guard standing a few feet away. You're going to have to sing in the face of those devils. You're going to have to sing in the face of those devils. You're going to have to sing when all the guards will hear you. Come on, you're going to have to sing when all the prisoners will hear you. Come on, when this church is full of people on Sunday and they ain't never been here before and you're just wondering, well, I'm kind of shy. I'm kind of embarrassed. You better not be shy on Sunday. You better jump louder than you've ever jumped or higher than you ever jumped. You better, you better, oh, you better worship God. You better let the devil know. You know why? Because those are prisoners and they're looking for a way of escape and you are the way of escape, honey. When you praise God, and the Bible says there in Acts that all the prison doors opened up. It wasn't just Paul and Silas. It was every prison door for every prisoner was opened up because two men worshiped God. And the prison doors of the sinners, even the prison doors of the murderers, the prison doors of the rapists were opened up. And on Sunday and Wednesday, when we come into the house of God, if we'll praise God. God will not only open our prison doors, amen, but God will open the prison doors. And that lady that's been walking up and down the street selling her body for the last 20 years. God will open her prison doors and the chains will fall off. She'll begin to dance. She'll begin to praise. She'll begin to talk in tongues. And she'll speak of something she's never felt before in her life. Why? Why does it happen? 
And it will not happen because of her. It will happen because of you. It will happen because of your praise. Just like Paul and Silas, they started the praise. They started the worship there in that jail. And when you follow through, you will bring deliverance to the other people in the house of God. They will feel it. They will hear it. And their jails will open up. Let's give him a big praise. Come on. Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's just lay our hearts to the Lord. Come on, let's just love him right now. Let's glorify his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for those angels that are even here tonight with us. Thank you for the angels of the Lord that are here. They were with Paul and Silas. They opened those jail cells. They had to come to the rescue because there's so much power in your praise. And those angels will come to your rescue. Amen. See, it ain't happened. Praise him some more. Said it didn't happen. Lift him up some more. Said I didn't. It didn't happen yet. Go ahead and keep praising him because something's fixing to happen. Something's fixing to happen. Something's going to change in your life. Something's going to change in your situation because you praise him in the dark hour. Because you praise him when everybody is sitting there looking around. You praise him when you're in shackles and you praise him anyway. Something's going to happen. Those shackles are going to break. I said those shackles are going to break. Hallelujah. Those shackles are going to fall to the ground into the streets and you're going to begin to preach again. You're going to be free again. Then you can testify the angel of the Lord came. Why did it happen? Why did the angel of the Lord came? Because I'm saved? No, not because I'm saved. He came because I praised and worshiped the Lord. The Lord sent his angel because of my praise. Amen. God would rather see your praise, you by yourself, compared to 10,000 angels. He would rather for you have you praising him than one million angels. Your praise and your worship is more powerful than a billion angels because you are a free moral agent on this earth. You don't live in heaven and you make a full choice to lift your hands. And let me tell you, when you do that, all of heaven is watching. All of heaven is rejoicing. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. I believe that. That's why praise and worship, we should not cease. Now, there is four and twenty elders that march around the throne and they cry nothing but holy, holy. Holy, that's all they're programmed to do. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, that's all they do. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, all we need is one elder in the church. All we need is one little saint that just got saved. All we need is one little person that don't know much about God and start praising God. And maybe tell you something God's going to turn from those four and twenty elders. And God said, there she is again. Ha <laughs> ha Hey, four and twenty elders, come and look at her. There she is. She's going through hell on earth. Bills are passed through. Car won't run. Kid is sick. She got migraines every day. But she's praising me. She's praising me. I'm going to heal her. I'm going to deliver her. I'm going to give her a job. I'm going to heal that baby. I'm going to do what she needs done. Why? Because I'm her praise. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Anybody will feel like dancing. Oh, go ahead and shout. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh. There is power tonight. Come on, let's, let's come on around. Let's get some music going. Hey Amen. I, I think we should just come around tonight and praise God for a little bit. Come on, let's just come around this front and praise God for a little bit. Come on, and come up here and show that devil. Hey, you ain't stopping me. Hey Amen, you ain't stopping me. Hey Amen, I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, that's right. Just go ahead and love him right now. Don't wait. You ain't worth praising no music. Go ahead and love him. We don't need any music. Amen. That's just a side benefit. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 